Welcome back. This one will be a bit of a basic overview of the um, control panel. So there's a lot going on here. Um, don't be scared. Um, hopefully I can actually get some other pictures in this video so you're not just stuck looking at a white screen of a, uh, of a welder. But um, here we see the, uh, the control panel. So this is what EWM called a Comfort 2.0 panel. So they've got various specs of front panels that they attach to their machines. There's the Smart panel which it gives you uh, less features. Um, the comfort panel gives you more adjustability. Um, and in their MIG welding range, they've got the uh, what they call it, the basic model control panel. They've got the synergic controls, and they've got the multi matrix controls, which is like an L LCD screen based system. Um, we're looking at the EWM Tetrix 230 Pulse ACDC TIG welder. Um, this particular machine is, as you probably worked out by its name, a, a TIG welding power source. Um, it's able to run AC and DC. It also has the capability to do various pulse settings, which um, can be quite beneficial for some jobs, in particular um, welding of aluminium or thin materials. Um, and we've got, like I said, the Comfort 2.0, or Comfort version 2.0, control panel which gives us a lot of things to play with. So let's get stuck in, we'll have a bit of a look at the various um, what what this hieroglyphics on this machine means but hopefully we'll be able to demystify it for you so stay tuned. So first thing you want to do is power the machine on. We've fed the machine gas which is a welding grade argon, uh, just the standard old gas for TIG welding. Um, We've got the machine hooked up to 240 volt AC power um, from an Australian power source, which is 240 volt and 60 hertz, I think we run it. So um, that's uh, all good. So we'll reach around the rear of the machine and uh, flick the power switch. You'll see some action. Might have heard the machine is powered up and also the gas is pulsed. Um, so we know we've got gas connected to the machine. Um, now, I guess the first thing is uh, looking at the front panel, we've got a lot going on, but um, it's probably worth noticing or noting the, the, the bare, bare minimum. Um, up here we've got our main control panel, um, which goes through from pretty much from the start of the weld, which you'd have a pre-flow of gas. Um, to a starting amperage, to a ramp up, to a peak amperage, to a base current if you're running pulse. Um, then you've got a downslope, a finishing amperage, and a post gas flow. So when you weld, when you turn the TIG welder on and you start welding, you are getting from end to end. The gas starts, you weld, and then gas stops. Um, what happens in between is what we as operators will want to uh, adjust. Um, and in some instances you've got the ability to change all the features, so whether it's the frequency, the AC balance, you can dial in tungsten diameters, um, as well as a lot of other things. Um, so I guess starting from the first principles, we've got a few LCD screens up the top. The left one is currently showing 100, which is an amperage value. As you can see, the A for amps is lit up and the voltage value which is 14 volts. Um, here we've got a gas purge button. Push that and the gas will flow for I think 20 seconds. Um, you can hit it to start and hit it again to stop like so. So that would allow you to purge the line of your torch um, before getting started in addition to the pre-flow which will start when you commence the weld. Um, we've got a few other little features and things going on here. We've got um, the S lit up, which is a safety um, feature that shows that a safety variable is active. Um, it's also showing that the VRD, the voltage reduction device, which is another safety feature, that that's active. So what the VRD does is it um, limits the amount of um, voltage available at the electrode. In our case, the, uh, the, the tungsten electrode, this bit here. Um, up until a point where you're ready to weld and then the machine gives it full power. That's to prevent anyone getting electrocuted. It's a safety feature. So when that VRD light's on, that VRD is active. Um, 
Moving to the right, you can see we've got uh, two pictures here and a, and a selectable scroll button. Um, this is for TIG, TIG welding, so this tells the machine that you want it to be a TIG welder. This shows it that you want, to, it, want it to be a stick welder. Um, so we want to be stick welding today. Uh, sorry, TIG welding today, so we've got the TIG welding light on. Down here we've got our, um, uh, our current, whether it's direct current, DC. Um, or AC. Um, in AC mode you also have the ability to do a balling function. That um, is an advanced feature but that would be used when you want to uh, turn a sharpened electrode into a balled electrode. It has a program that will do it for you. Um, just getting it set up on DC at the moment. Um, to the left side we've got here we've got our trigger latches so 2T 4T and spot the spot welding functions. So from the top, 2T is a two touch trigger mode. So when you have your TIG torch, when you hit the start button, you'll be welding until you let go of the start button and then you'll be welding will cease. Um, when you select 4T, you will push and hold to initiate the arc. It will find itself here at the starting amperage. When you let it go, it will ramp up to your main current and commence any pulse on the secondary amperage amount or value if you set it that way. When you wish to stop welding, you will push and hold. It will go through the down slope and land you here on the, the, the finishing amps, the ending amperage. When you let it go, it will um, go to the, the post flow. So that has benefits in some applications that uh, where you know welder might want to um, uh, you know prevent uh, you know crater fill and stuff like that. So um, preventing any porosity and fish eyes and the rest in in the welding job. Um, righto. So spot arc is a spot welding mode which has TP for time pulse. You might have seen flash up on the screen. So when you turn spot arc on, um, with a push of the trigger, it will provide a burst of current for the defined time. That current is always shown here. When this light is illuminated, that's your amperage. So in this instance, we would spot weld at 100 amps for 1.5 seconds time pulse TP. Um, the next function is spotmatic. Now this is the same as spot arc with the only difference being that you've got the ability to um, push the trigger once, which I've just pushed off screen. Uh, the light is flashing which means when I touch the tungsten to the job it will and lift off, it will create a high frequency arc to the job and then from there you'll be uh, running through the pulse timer or the spot timer. Um, if you need to do additional tacks, it's simply a matter of just touching that tungsten to the job again. So saves saves multiple trigger pushes every single time. Which you know when you're balancing multiple pieces of material, thin material, fit ups all over the place, it, it's really a re really good feature just to yeah you know, have that ability without you know needing to find an extra set of hands, which we all wish we had. Right, yeah, so we'll chuck it back on 2T trigger mode, just standard old trigger latch. Um, down here is the pulse features. So you can choose an automatic pulse. Automatic pulse means that the, uh, the pulse will be tied to your amperage. Um, that's a pretty nifty feature for um, particularly with foot pedal operation. If you want to pulse and use a foot pedal, um, generally at uh, Lower, lower amperages you'll have higher frequencies and at higher amperages you'll have lower frequencies. So this allows the, um, the, the welder to have a dynamic pulse frequency. Next one we've got here is um, uh, the standard pulse. What do they call that? Just looking through the uh, book here, it's got a specific name.
So we've got automated, uh, we've spoken about the auto automated pulsing, which is the first one. Uh, this is called thermal pulsing. So thermal pulsing is, um, uh, it's easy to show it on the screen, but it allows you to choose the peak amperage and the base amperage and the timing between them. So going through that, this will probably be a whole video on its own, but here we've got current one, 100 amps. For one second, you can see second light is lit up here. These, the base amperage is set to 15 amps at the moment. It's also notified as current 2. I stands for current. And that would happen for a second. So, in real world terms, what we've got is we've got 100 amps for a second. Oops, wrong way. And 15 amps for a second. One second. So, this machine will pulse one second high, one second low. One second high, one second low. Um, until you tell it to stop. Um... You hit the pulse button again, the light goes red, which you can see kilohertz, KHZ. Um, for anyone that doesn't know, hertz is a measure of frequency. Frequency is how many times something happens in a second. So kilohertz is how many thousand times a second something happens. So this has got kilohertz pulsing, which uh, they call metallurgical pulsing, which provides um, a pulsed frequency in the thousands of times per second up to 15,000 times a second. Um, for anyone that's ever heard, had a hearing test, you might have heard the, the earplugs, earmuffs on you and give you a frequency to, to listen to and ask you when you can hear it. Um, 15 kilohertz is insanely high pitched. It's that high pitched you can just barely hear it. Um, sort of like if anyone's had a dog whistle, you'll know that it doesn't make much noise but the, the dogs go bonkers for it. So. Um, yeah, that's uh, what 15 kilohertz, this machine will make that sort of pulse frequency. Um, what does that mean in the real world? Well, you've got some pretty uh, fine flaked um, weld that you can make with this machine. So um, instead of, it's, it's just a very smooth, flat um, fillet that you could lay down. Um, it's really cool. Um, okay, moving on. So I guess we've come this far and I haven't even spoke about the basic features but obviously we spoke about the the main um, display here and what that means for the world end to end so it's from pre-flow starting amperage ramp up time for that amperage peak amperage base amperage if you're running pulse um, down slope which is the time it takes to go from the anywhere in the pulse cycle where you are down to your finishing amperage um, which is just before the world finishes and then you're, you get your post flow. So how do we navigate through this? We've got two buttons to choose from. This will drive the flashing light left or to the left and this one will flash, uh, move the flashing light to the right. Each time you push it, it moves one um, portion of the welding process forward. If you get to the end, it goes back to the left. Yeah, you know, people that aren't button pushers and that's okay. You can push this button and turn it to take it through the welding processes in both directions. So it's a nice positive button. It clicks. One click is one movement. Um, it's not one of those annoying machines where you turn the button and you think you've got the variable and some reason or another it moves itself somewhere else and you get annoyed with it it's uh yeah really user friendly um i find myself using a mix of both on this machine i'll you know just cycle through nice and quick sort of getting the flashcards of what i'm interested in and getting a feel for what the world's doing um and then yeah otherwise you can uh lock a value in push the button cycle through push it to change it, adjust it up and down with the rotary switch, push it to lock it in and then move on to the next one. Okay, so that's that. Now, we haven't spoken about too much about the right side of the screen here. So this LCD currently showing 14 volts. 
Um, one thing to notice with this machine is it's got jobs. So jobs are what EWM, jobs are like saved programs. Um, EWM calls it a job, but really in real terms you've got job zero up to job seven. So you've got uh, seven plus zero, which is eight. Um, not mathematically speaking, of course, but job one to seven plus job zero is eight unique slots in which you can save welding information. So you can set up a job for a material and a thickness or a, a task that you might do fairly regularly and that job will remember that once the machine's turned off and you can easily go back to it. Um, it's worth noting that the bottom half of the screen shows job zero and we've got three lines here. Uh, or three dials I should say, rotary dials. The first one on the left is frequency in Hertz. This one here is balance. I don't know whether you can see that underneath. Balance, um, and this is tungsten diameter. So these two are used in AC only. This one is um, is used amongst all frequent all current types. So my torch is set up with a 2.4 millimeter tungsten. Um, so by dialing this up within the band of ranges within 2.4, helps the machine to work out what sort of arc initiation energy it wants to give to help the high frequency start. Um, obviously it's got settings down to 1mm tungstens up to 4mm plus on the right hand side. Um, yeah. well, I've just set it to the size it recommends for the tungsten I use and it works just fine. When you're running in AC mode, uh, in job zero of course, which we are now, these come into play. So it's just a matter of dialing in a frequency and the machine will work on that. You can go from 50 hertz AC frequency up to 200 hertz here. Um, let's get mine set around 120. Um, and then the AC balance. So AC balance is how much time the AC waveform spends in the positive side versus in the negative side. Zero on this machine is set at 35%. So um, you've got cleaning and penetration side of the waveform. So what you really want to do when welding aluminium as an example in AC, um, you've got a cleaning action which creates a, breaks down the oxide layer and helps you to get to the aluminium underneath. So that's the, um, the benefit of welding, TIG welding aluminium in AC is that the aluminium oxide layer which forms on top of the aluminium, it melts at a way higher temperature than the aluminium metal itself. So you get this like, um, this skin on top of the, uh, on top of the weld and it just becomes a mess. So AC current, particularly the cleaning portion of the waveform will help to move that oxide air layer out of the way electrically so that you can um, introduce filler metal to the weld. Um, so yeah, that's how that works. Um, probably digressed a bit, but yeah. So that's AC balance, AC frequency, and tungsten diameter for arc initiation energy. So that's about all on the machine as far as the basic features go. Um, we'll probably do a few examples and show how they how they stack up um, in some real world applications. Um, we'll also go into the U expert user menu. Alright, thanks for watching.